button with our application. Uh, something about me. I create magic with React Native Interpreter. Uh, we create in our application for seven months, and uh, now it's uh, it has like 1,000 better customers, and uh, in a few weeks it will be in App Store. Uh, so I will tell you about uh, all experience that we achieved uh, uh, at, at, the, at this pass. Uh, firstly, I would like to ask you uh, how many people worked previously with React Native? Uh, please raise your hands. Oh, that's nice. And how many wants to, wants to work with, with it? <laughs> really nice. <laughs> uh, so, uh, how, only one slide about how React Native works uh, and uh, why, why it's uh, slightly different uh, from how we uh, test and deliver web applications. So, there is uh, JavaScript, uh, JavaScript core, uh, J J uh, JavaScript thread that runs your code, and you write your like uh, uh, you write your React code like the same that you write in web pages with maybe slightly differences, but like the same. Uh, but uh, there is uh, th th there are native threads. Uh, like uh, UI thread that actually renders our components uh, and user interacts with this thread, for example, pressing on uh, uh, pressing on button, entering something in input, and uh, also like native th thread that is bridge uh, between JavaScript and uh, this UI thread, and this thread also han handles uh, some different uh, for example, storage and so on. Uh, so, uh, di di different uh, difference uh, between testing and uh, delivering, deploying uh, from web applications is that we we actually write JavaScript code, but actually we need to test uh, it on real application that is uh, th that is. Uh, build it to uh, APK file uh, or EPA file for Apple. And how, how, we, how we can do it? Uh, firstly, when I started uh, working on this project, I thought something, something about this. So we write some JS code, then uh, make build, uh, push to App Store, and that's it. Uh, but after some weeks, I understand that reality is slightly another. <laughs> and I will tell, tell you about it. Uh, also, uh, I, I will tell about a lot of stuff uh, regarding testing, continuous integration, and you can uh, go to th this link, git.io rnstk, and uh, there you can see simple React Native Starter Kit that uh, implements uh, most of stuff uh, about uh, which I will, I will talk. Uh, so, wh what, what we need besides JS code? Firstly, and uh, really the simple, simplest one is JavaScript tests. Uh, we need to test uh, unit, uh, unit testing like uh, test test our Redux actions, reducers, and also test some components, React Native components. Uh, for that, we use uh, all the same libraries that we use in React for uh, such tasks. So Mo Mocha, Chai, Enzyme, and uh, like helper, helper libraries like Synon Chai and Chai Enzyme. And uh, actually, it's really, it's really simple. So we write, just write uh, just write test. It's uh, test uh, example test uh, for reducer. Uh, then, then we need to write components tests, and uh, it became it it becomes slightly more difficult. Uh, but uh, 
It's also easy. We use uh, Enzyme. Uh, it's a library from Airbnb that is supposed to for painless uh, components testing. Uh, we can, in React Native, we can use uh, shallow rendering, so we just uh, render uh, com component uh, in uh, sort of like uh, vi vi virtual DOM tree, so it's not not actual uh, not actual DOM, uh, and we can test. Also, we uh, we need to use React Native mock uh, for uh, component smoking. Uh, because, because there are a lot of uh, embedded components that ha have uh, their APIs, uh, and also you can do it uh, like uh, manually, but <laughs> it's uh, simpler to use this React Native mock. Uh, how how to use it? Uh, you also can see in th that example uh, that I uh, th that was uh, li linked to what was on previous slides. Uh, and uh, this is an uh, example of component test with Enzyme. So uh, we just firstly shallow render button with some text with onPress handler, and we check that expect te uh, ex expect this uh, button to have uh, property text and uh, to have uh, children text, and also. Uh, test uh, b b button on press handler uh, with uh, Sinon. So it was simple, but uh, then we need to test uh, how our actual app works. So we need to uh, run app on simulator or sometimes on device, but uh, yeah, we, ju we just test uh, on simulator. We need to check how, how I app works with API. So for example, we need to log in, we need to fetch data and so on. And also we need to run through main functionality and check that it works. So, uh, so, so some code is easily to test uh, with uh, just regular unit testing. Uh, for example, all these reactions, reducers, and so on. But uh, after we, after we successfully uh, done it, we need to test how every, everything works, and uh, that's why we need to use APM. Uh, so, with APM, we write integration tests uh, that can can be run on real application, and these tests are written in JavaScript. So it's kind of magic. And we use uh, Selenium web, web driver syntax. Uh, so it's uh, mostly the same syntax that you can use for uh, web testing, but with some nuances, but almost the same. Uh, so how APM works, uh, it's archi architecture. So actually APM is a HTTP server uh, that uh, creates a uh, web driver session. And APM starts test cases on device uh, that, uh, uh, that listen for commands. Uh, so APM use, uh, uh, use test frameworks from, uh, from iOS. S uh, so it's uh, in, uh, in instruments uh, and uh, from Android. So actually, we can test uh, apps, apps uh, on these uh, platforms uh, with uh, simple JavaScript code. So it's an uh, example of uh, it's example of test. Uh, in in this example, we get driver. It's web driver uh, to communicate with uh, and uh, get element by class name, set some value, uh, press on login button and wait uh, that tr transition occurs and we go to the dashboard. And that's a really simple scenario. So uh, we can use it for, for example, test of our login functionality. But after that, we need to test uh, some other functionality uh, that is uh, deep, somewhere deeply in system. 
and each time goes through uh, this login login flow. Each time uh, do uh, the same stuff. It's uh, it's firstly it's annoying, and secondly it's it costs really a lot of time because Appium is actually is really slow. No, not so. Uh, so uh, I, I will show you example, but uh, yeah, uh, on our application, APM tests are running something like 10 minutes, and we don't have a lot of tests, but yeah, <laughs> we, we, we need to wait this 10 minutes. Uh, so how we can automate this stuff and uh, make it simpler? So we automate comments, uh, uh, p uh, and uh, automate actions like disp we dispatch actions. For example, login, logout. So without actual uh, entering data in uh, this login form. And also we automate uh, redirecting to roads. We we're using React Native router flux, and uh, uh, and uh, we can like make login action and then redirect to the middle of application, like to fifth screen, and uh, at this screen we can test something. Uh, so, uh, for, for that, for that uh, yeah, and there, there's also Link who uh, previously <laughs> forgot to uh, go on it and, uh, for example, photo, ma make photo of it, you can do it. So, how, how it actually works. We have our APM test. And uh, we, we have uh, action server that uh, is, is run uh, in, uh, in the same process that this APM test. And we have uh, on our mobile device, we have uh, mobile test runner. Actually, it's this button, execute button. That is, uh, we uh, we render it only for test builds. So uh, on our continuous integration server, we just uh, have like slightly different command to build it, and uh, we have we render this button. And Apium, uh, and how how it actually works? Firstly, we do uh, we push some action to this action server. For example, we want to log in to application. Then, with Appium, we press execute button. So just a simple uh, click on button, uh, like on any, re uh, on any other button that uh, is presented on screen. After that, uh, this, uh, uh, te uh, th this uh, test runner, it uh, f fetch uh, fetch some data from this action server and get uh, get action. It can be it can be a Redux action. Or it also can be like redirect action. Uh, and I think yeah, it's uh, hard to see <laughs> this action. So I just uh, log uh, these actions uh, in uh, uh, on log these actions on screen. Uh, yeah. So that's why we can test uh, more. Uh, more hard cases and uh, automate our test better. Yeah. Uh, so, some, something about Apium. It has uh, some slightly bad uh, things. Firstly, it's it's slow, uh, but it's uh, it's okay. We <laughs> we 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 not found uh, anything that is quicker. <laughs> Uh, and uh, yeah, if you develop for iOS 10, uh, <coughs> uh, if if you develop for iOS, they uh, <coughs> in Xcode 8, Apple introduced like new new test framework and d disabled old one. So Apple migrated to a new version, and there is some problems with uh, API uh, of these tests. Uh, so if if uh, you have like big project with a lot of tests, it can be hard to migrate from these versions. But for simple projects, it's it's really okay. So you can check uh, th this example. You can check uh, 
at the, uh, this React Native Starter Kit, you can check uh, and run it both on uh, iOS 9 and iOS 10. Uh, so, uh, what, what, what is after tests? Okay, we have tests, uh, but we need to set up uh, some continuous integration. Uh, we we uh, we have some discussions about what to choose uh, to uh, buy own Mac Mini and uh, set up Team City on it and so on. But after all, we decided to choose Travis. Actually, actually, it works. Uh, it cost not 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 so much, and uh, you can. You can run tests uh, with. Uh, you can run tests on actual uh, macOS machine. Uh, it's uh, it's Mac Mini, and uh, yeah, it works. Uh, after that, there, there will be some uh, hints about continuous integration. I th uh, please raise your hands. How many people have sometimes have uh, broken master builds? Nobody? <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, sometimes some bad guy push some bad code in master and it became broken. And uh, after that, some other guy also push some code and he he will uh, he will break uh, some other stuff, and so on. And uh, in in one of my previous companies, uh, there were really big problem that sometimes builds were broken for five days, and nobody wants to fix them. Like, hmm, why why I need to fix this build? Uh, it's uh, Alex who broke it, or s some other guys. So yeah, it was really a problem. So we implemented ready branches. Uh, what if we just uh, create separate branch for, for pull request, uh, then merge, uh, merge master in this branch, so to be uh, sure that uh, this branch is really actual, and after that, run test on it. Uh, if tests passing and uh, nobody merged nothing in master b before, we just uh, <coughs> we just merge uh, this branch to master. And how to do it with one command? So we don't need to do a lot of stuff, press a, at a lot of button. We're using TC merge. So you can go to uh, our debitor GitHub. Uh, you 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 can you can install it and run with uh, one command like tc merge. You have some feature and uh, simple scripts for Travis that do all other stuff automatically. So it's really simple. So if uh, th this screen is run. Uh, it's run on tra Travis, uh, so if it's ready branch, so we just uh, fetch, fetch master, uh, ch check, check out uh, in this branch, merge master into it, and after uh, test finish, if everything is okay, we, uh, merge, uh, m we merge this branch to master. So you can... Uh, you 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 can you can use the scripts. Uh, they're also an example, and I think uh, this prese presentation will also be se be sent after conference. So after that, what uh, I would like to talk something about continuous delivery. Uh, when you have your code working and merchant master, the most interesting thing is happened. And it's really the, the most interesting thing is, is happened on iOS. Because you need to maintain a lot of stuff. You need to maintain, uh, you need to maintain certificates, you need to maintain provision profiles, and they are really, really easily can be broken. Uh, for example, if you add uh, some new device, or maybe 
one guy in team that sits in other city, add something uh, in uh, uh, in Apple account developer, like a device. So provision profiles became broken and it, it was really, really annoying be before we uh, used uh, Fastlane. Uh, so what, what, what it can it do? Uh, it, can, uh, it can store and manage all certificates and provision profiles for iOS. And it works. Like in 98% of cases, so, so sometimes there are some bugs in it uh, in first lane, but uh, yeah, in most of cases it works. Uh, so uh, also you can you can use uh, it for uh, not not for React Native, uh, but uh, for iOS uh, ju just for regular iOS projects. Also, this first lane can can help you uh, make a builds. Uh, D directly fast lane uh, can build uh, for iOS, and uh, there are some fast lane scripts uh, that can uh, build uh, React Native pro React Native project for Android. You can check it in this blog. So guys just uh, developed the scripts for fast lane, uh, and uh, also fast lane do uh, can do really really amazing stuff. Uh, it uh, submits uh, your better builds to test flight, it submit builds uh, to uh, Play Store Alpha Track, and also it can submit your release application to App Store. Uh, but, but every, everything, everything's okay, and we, uh, we run this build, and uh, it works. Uh, our testers can set up it through test flight, can use it. Our users can set up our application through App Store. But we need to wait before Apple approves your application. Sometimes it, uh, it can be one, two, three days. And also, bad thing is that users not update our application for a lot of time. So we can introduce a lot of new features, but users will don't know about it. Or maybe we can fix some bugs and uh, push update to App Store, but uh, you users will contact uh, Apple support. Uh, no, not, not Apple support. Uh, like your uh, users will contact your support and ask uh, why our application is not worked, uh, why why some feature is not worked, um, and. Uh, also, one bad stuff that we uh, found that uh, if we push new build to App Store, uh, all reviews from uh, users will become uh, like cleared. So uh, when new user will go to this uh, application, he uh, he will see nothing, like just uh, ratings from like average rating from pr previous versions, but not reviews. And uh, it's, it's bad. But we write on JavaScript and it's dynamic language and we can update uh, JavaScript immediately. And yeah, Apple developer agreement allows to do it. So uh, we can use code push. Uh, well, what, what, what is it, code push? Uh, so somebody, somebody know? <laughs> Yeah, so some guys know that's nice, but I will I, I will uh, tell you. So it's a cloud service uh, that uh, that is actually cross platform, and it has uh, SDK for React Native. It has SDK for Cordova, and it uh, it can do amazing stuff. It can update on the fly your ap application JavaScript code. And uh, th this is amazing. But one, one little thing that uh, you can't, uh, if, if you change something uh, in uh, iOS uh, models, in Android, like in native models, so you updated some, uh, some native stuff like React Native version, uh, you can do it, you can't do it, and uh, you need to use uh, like regular fast lane uh, build uh, process. 
but for uh, simple bug fixes for some new functionality, it, it's, it works and it, it's really nice. Uh, also, yeah, we talked about uh, some, some stuff <laughs> and uh, one my, uh, my last theme will be about crash reporting and monitoring. Actually, we really need it uh, for these applications because uh, otherwise we will not, uh, we will don't know about what what happens on this application, uh, and we can use some services for it. Uh, currently, we are using Crosslytics, and it has some good stuff. Uh, it uh, log logs all crashes, and it logs all errors. Uh, so differences uh, crash is like when app application just boom <laughs> and closes and uh, we also can log our uh, cli client side errors for example uh, some validation errors some server errors that is uh, that user receives and so on uh, but uh, crosslytics has some disadvantages so uh, it really works nice for uh, regular iOS builds, uh, but uh, not, not so nice for React Native, uh, because you can't group uh, errors by key and uh, no source map support. So actually sometimes when you receive uh, this crash report and it's, it's hard to understand uh, what was happened. So about cra crash reporting, we're still looking for better solutions. Uh, I was uh, at uh, Reactive, Conference, uh, Reactive Conf in Bratislava and a uh, guy from Microsoft, he presented uh, this code push be next and promised to release it in the end of uh, 2016 and it will support um, all this crash information it will, with source maps and it, it looks really promising. But yeah, we need to wait it. And also, while preparing this presentation, I discovered uh, bu bug snack. It's uh, uh, like Crosslytics analog, but seems to work w better with uh, React Native. Yeah, that's it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Thank um, you for your beautiful presentation. And yeah, I see one question. Thank you for the speech. Uh, as I understood, uh, code push uh, just push uh, code to the App Store or Play Store, right? Uh, no, no. Uh, Already to the client. If a client already installed the uh, application, will it be updated? Yeah, so uh, I will tell uh, in detail how it works. Uh, you, uh, you, you push, uh, with code push, you push uh, some client updates to their cloud uh, service. So it will, uh, it will be in cloud. And uh, after user uh, opened his application, application check if there is some updates. And if uh, updates exist, it will download uh, these updates uh, in uh, silent mode, uh, so user will, will not see nothing. It will just download it. And uh, next time when you start application, uh, when, when, actually when user start application, uh, it will just replace uh, this uh, JavaScript uh, build, like your old JavaScript build, JavaScript bundle with a uh, new one that was down downloaded from code push server. Is it from the box? Uh, w what? Is it from the box uh, after updating the uh, application on the client side? Or you need, or you need to install some tools uh, for the project? You create a uh, React Native application. Yeah. Uh, push some uh, code to the cloud. Yeah. And Application on the client side uh, automatically will update uh, this code from the yeah. cloud. Yeah. Do you need to install for the for it uh, for this uh, some tools? 
you, you need to have uh, this code push installed, uh, so you need to integrate it in your application. Oh, it can be done really in a uh, simple few lines of code, and uh, yeah, <laughs> it just Thank works. You. Any more questions? Guys? No questions? Oh, I see. Don't be shy. Uh, bad. <laughs> Maybe. Could could you say a few words a words about your overall experience with React Native? Like uh, how how complex was your application? How many screens? Many complex animation? And uh, would you choose React Native again for this this kind of applications in future? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so we are uh, we are a team of uh, three people that work uh, only on uh, this mobile application. So front end, we have different backend guys, and we build it for seven months. So it it's actually big. Uh, no, no, not so not so really really huge, but uh, it's like uh, I think it's like medium sized application uh, with a lot of uh, functionality. And uh, I really enjoy uh, how to do it uh, with React Native. And uh, previously, I worked with uh, PhoneGap Cordova and built an uh, application with Angular. And it was, uh, it was not so good. <laughs> yeah, one more. OK. Uh, could you tell me if it is possible when you develop an application on React Native uh, to have a um, similar part which uh, is similar to different operating systems and, uh, and uh, um, part uh, of code which uh, uh, is used only by uh, iOS or only by Android? Yeah. Uh, actually, you can, you can do almost almost anything <laughs> so uh, you ca you can you can do uh, you 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 can uh, build uh, application uh, with uh, like like ni 90 maybe 98% of shared code uh, between uh, iOS and Android and it will work but it will share uh, the uh, the similar design and uh, iOS and Android gu guidelines they are really different so we decided to build, uh, firstly, iOS application, and then uh, to build Android one. But we will reuse uh, all the code that is uh, connected to business logic. So we will reuse all actions, all reducers. Also, we'll reuse some, some components, uh, but uh, not, not, not all components. And uh, you just need to have uh, different com different components, uh, like presentational components, that, is, uh, that looks different for different uh, operation systems. Also, you can have just one component, and in this one component, we, you, you, can, uh, uh, you, you can with just regular if, so if device platform Android, uh, you do this stuff, if device platform iOS, you do this stuff. So it's, uh, you, 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 you can do <laughs> how you want, and you should uh, find the, bet the best solution for this particular case. Uh, is it possible to see a percentage of common and uh, different code? Uh, wh what? Percentage of uh, common code between uh, several operating systems. Um, so, we 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 uh, we don't have our android application now we just plan to build it but uh, as from um, from different articles the different experience of uh, other people so it can be like uh, from 70 to 80% of shared code it depends from uh, design of your applications thank you 
do you have experience with graph? With graph? Yeah. Uh, no. Have you? Okay. <laughs> Pretty clear. <laughs> More questions? Okay, uh, so I will be uh, in like uh, du during next talk, I will be uh, in uh, uh, this mo mobile uh, on, in gr on green scene uh, at this mobile speaker corner and you can uh, C come and ask uh, questions, uh, and we can discuss some s something that you are interested in. So you're welcome. Also, you're welcome to contact contact with me, ask questions.